guys, today we are going to be checking out the math wing. Wait, they have a ship that you can go on? It's the first thing that catches your eye is the giant ship. Crew oh, members work problem. problem. This, this table, table shows, shows the number, number of crew members who worked on the ship, ship the past two, two months. months. If nine, nine more engineers work in February than the number that worked in January, how many stewards work in, in February? February? Okay, so total of that is 14. Nine more engineers worked in February and 11. 11. Crew members, crew members work, work problem. problem. How many students? This table shows, shows the number of crew members who worked work on, on the ship the past two months. If nine, nine more, more engineers work in February than the number that worked in January, how many stewards work, work in February? Stewards in February is four, three. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay. That was confusing because it said engineers, but it but then it was asking about stewards. So it just didn't make sense. Now I see you can go in this back part. Like under the ship. Right here. Whoa, that's cool. You can see all the little compartments. I'll go to this. Yes. During, During the Middle, middle ages, ages, time was indicated by striking a bell for each hour. hour. For, for example, example, at 12 o'clock, the bell would strike 12, 12 times. The term, term o'clock is an abbreviation of the phrase, stroke of a clock. Hmm. You didn't know that. This way and then up and around. So we'll go like this. The crystals. Wait, is that crash horses? It is. You can tell from the picture. Crash yes. Horses. Today's crash course is on avalanches. Sweet Jabby Gabby, look at that snow go! go. An avalanche is the sudden rush of a large amount of snow, ice, or rocks down a mountain. Well, well someone's, someone's been reading, reading the dictionary. Well done! done. But to really understand an avalanche, avalanche, you have to be at one with the snow. No, not really. No, no you, you don't, don't, sir. Yes, you do. You do. You do. You do. 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 Back, Back to the snow in my protective suit. suit. Oh, I bet you're wondering, wondering what this cord is for. Not really, sir. Well, well let's, let's just say it's part of an advanced technological, technological breakthrough in avalanche protection. I feel like it will be the But first, today's fast facts. Fact number one. An avalanche happens when a large mass of snow slides down the side of a mountain. Number two. Avalanches can move as fast as 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour? Number three. Sometimes it's possible to predict when avalanches might happen, but individual avalanches are not predictable. Sir, do you see how dangerous that is? Yes. Extremely. Here I am on top of a snowy mountain waiting for an avalanche. Can't just wait. Still waiting. Still waiting. You're right, Sandra, enough, enough waiting. waiting. Commence Let's demonstration mode. mode. Step, Step one, activate the protection suit. Step, Step two, I will now, now hurl myself, myself down, down the mountain. Here we go. See you, I've just like this. Done, hurt, one, two. And then we have to call it. Okay. Yes. 
Why'd you have to try to be more contact with the with just with a with an avalanche? Why would you hurl yourself down a mountain then having a sharp rock poke you, making you fly into the side of a mountain and then causing an avalanche? Anyways, let's look at this. Hi, I'm fine. Welcome to Map in the World Around Us. Math is the language people use to describe the world around them, and because the language of math includes numbers, we can use it to describe things very precisely. Sometimes we use symbols to stand for special numbers. One of those symbols is pi. And that's what we're talking about today. A very special number called pi. Did I hear you talking about pi? Grandma? Look! I made your favorite pumpkin! Thank you so much, Grandma, but we're actually talking about a different kind of pie today. Oh! That pie! Wait, you know about pie? Sure! Pie is very useful! Suppose you want to know the distance around the circle. Like your tiny little round thing. When you just obey me. That distance is called the circumference. If you know the distance across the circle, which is called diameter, then you can find the circumference by multiplying the diameter by pi. So what number is pi? So what number is pi? Well, mathematicians found out that when you try to write down what pi is, the decimal places just keep going and going. It's impossible to find all the digits of pi. Now, if I know my grandson, he's probably wondering how can people actually use pi if it goes on and on and on. I was wondering. Well, to solve many problems, you just round off pi to 3.14. So, if the diameter of the circle is 9 inches, then you would multiply that by 3.14 to find out about what the circumference is, and that's 28.26 inches. This works no matter how big or small the circle is. It could be 2 inches across or 2 miles across. The circumference is always about 3.14 times the diameter. Pi is fascinating. Even if you round it off to 3.14, you can use it to solve all kinds of science and math questions that involve circles and spheres. And engineers use pi to make cell phones, cars, computers, and tons of other stuff we use every day. So hooray for pi! Both kinds! And remember, math is all around us if you just know where to look. Until next time. Wow. Even his grandma knows what pie is. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. Matthew, Matthew good to see you in class today. Hello, Mr. Einstein. Well, guys, hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and slap that bell so you never miss a video. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.